let us bow our heads as we pray. Our Father, we, with reverence, turn to your word again for counsel, for guidance, for inspiration. And we ask that you will send your spirit, the author of this word, to minister to our souls again, soften our hearts, make your word clear to us, give us some nugget of truth, something with which we can go from this place uh, at the end of the day rejoicing, knowing that God has met with us. And we ask this in the wonderful name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. My message today is uh, somewhat different from previous days. On Sabbath morning, uh, we spoke on prisoners of hope. On Sabbath afternoon, we spoke about the peril of indifference. And yesterday, we talked about tomorrow. I'm going to read to us from the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 4. And I'm going to begin reading at verse 28. Daniel chapter 4, reading from verse 28. Daniel writes, All this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar. At the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. The king spake and said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee, thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers, and his nails like bird's claws. Verse 34, And at the end of the days I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. Our topic for today is the beast in us. The beast in us. The biblical record is punctuated with incredible stories. It tells of a man swallowed by a fish. It speaks of a man walking on water. Amazing, incredible stories. And some of these 
are unique and happened once and only once. But among the most unusual, the most incredible, the most astonishing is that recorded in the book of Daniel chapter 4. It happened about 2,500 years ago. Nebuchadnezzar was king of Babylon. He was the most powerful monarch of the day. He was absolute ruler. Nebuchadnezzar's word was law. He was responsible for what we now refer to as one of the seven natural wonders of the world, namely the hanging gardens of Babylon. But Daniel chapter 4 records that one day he was full of pride as he walked along the walls of his magnificent city surveying and reflecting on his marvelous achievements. Daniel tells us and lists the boastful adjectives that abounded as Nebuchadnezzar spoke to himself. It was a self-centered speech punctuated with the personal pronoun I, I. And the record says that same hour or about the same time, something incredible happened. Nebuchadnezzar's world changed. About the same time, perhaps he had retired to his chambers when an unusual sound emanated from his quarters. It sounded more animal than human. The guards and courtiers rushed to his aid, fearing for his safety, expecting to be confronted by some four-legged intruder. What they saw when they entered his chambers was neither human nor beast. What they saw was robed in the king's regalia. They recognized the clothes, but not the features. And they concluded, as they gazed in astonishment at this strange figure, they concluded very quickly that their great monarch had suddenly been afflicted with a terrible mental illness. The name for it, lycanthropy, or the Wolfman Syndrome. George III of Great Britain and Otto of Bavaria suffered from a similar condition. He was terrible to behold. And it was a result of his sin. What was Nebuchadnezzar's principal sin? It was the sin of pride. And, and pride is the food of beasts. Pride nourishes, feeds the beast in us. Ellen White says in the beginning, man was created noble and dignified in the image of God himself. We were like God morally and physically, but something happened to us. We contracted an infection, the contagion of sin, and another nature was given birth. Ellen White goes on, Second Testimonies 3, 4, 7. She says, man, the noblest being upon the earth, formed in the image of God, transforms himself into a beast. 
he makes himself gross and corrupt the beast in us. When I was a youngster, before I became a Christian, I watched a movie on TV. It was called The Thing. And you know, there are some things that you don't forget. And that's why we ought to be careful what we expose ourselves to. We ought to guard the avenues of our souls, the eyes, the ears, the mouth. But God understands in my ignorance, and I, I remember it very clearly, it was called The Thing, and it was about a creature from outer space that uh, had infected human beings. It took control of them. But after it had infected human beings, those human beings still masqueraded as normal. They would still be nice. But under certain conditions, the beast would reveal itself. And it would do so in a most destructive manner. And the only way to destroy the beast was that the person who had been infected had to die. The beast in us. that rears its ugly head under certain conditions. Uh, I was sharing with uh, the young adults uh, that uh, I also serve, not also, I serve my country as a magistrate. And so I, I sit in court uh, and, uh, have, and deal with criminals. And uh, Oftentimes, before, before uh, I sentence someone, I, uh, I have to ask uh, probation for a pre-sentence report. And oftentimes, when we are considering what to do with them, the, uh, the, the advocate, uh, the defendant's advocate, their lawyer would jump up, or probation would say, uh, uh, Your Worship, we know uh, what, what he did was terrible, but it was out of character. It's not the person we know him to be. Totally out of character. But we know that when we behave in certain ways, when we conduct ourselves in a certain manner, it might be out of character, it might be contrary to, to how we're viewed, but we know that it is the beast in us. When a man hits his wife, he's behaving like a beast. It's the beast in him. About two years ago, my father, who lived in Jamaica, was seriously ill in hospital. I had a call say he was gravely ill. And every day I would call the hospital in Jamaica uh, for an update on his condition. My father has never acknowledged God. My father's God was alcohol and women. He was a, a drinker and a womanizer all his life. And one day I rang the hospital, spoke with a head nurse. And she said, she said, Mr. Brooks, something strange happened today. She said, your father did something that was completely out of character. I said, what happened, nurse? She said, he was cursing and swearing. The foulest ob obscenities came from his mouth. I said, nurse, that wasn't out of character. That's my father. It's a beast in him. 
under certain condition because of the condition he was in he had become disinhibited and and the beast rose up and expressed itself that thing that beast in us rising up and flexing its muscles when the condition is right last year 2012 bbc television made a doc and, and screened a, a documentary series called the monsters inside me it was a fascinating uh, documentary series it was about parasites that live on or in or in many cases live inside the human body it, need, it needed a strong constitution to watch the program. In fact, in fact, so much so that I could not bring myself to watch it. I had to just read about it. These were strange microscopic creatures lurking inside unsuspecting bodies. They were gruesome, shocking, and sometimes deadly. One of them was a tapeworm that we get from eating pork. Of course, we don't eat pork. A tapeworm from, from pork which slowly eats away at the brain. Many of these creatures are flesh eating. And they show how they showed how how some eat away at the brain, some consume the eyes, and others feed on the head. Every organ of the body is susceptible to these creatures. Monsters inside us. But I declare to us today, on the authority of God's word, that there is another monster more menacing, more sinister, and more destructive lurking inside us. It is called sin. Chesterton wrote, Inside every person, the image of God can be found. Yet inside each person, there lives also a beast. And we must account for and accept both extremes. They are furious opposites, these two images that we possess. Piccadilla Mirandola in his oration on the dignity of man wrote, we may use our God-given freedom to rise to become like angels or sink to the level of beasts. Andrew Bird wrote, we are little more than a noble beast. And the prophet Isaiah in 49.15 wrote, can a woman forget her suckling child? That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. Yea, she may forget, yet I will not forget thee. In other words, Isaiah is saying, even the most powerful human instinct can be neutralized by the beast in us. Padrika Cain Hill, mother and wife, dressed her three children one morning, made breakfast for them. Then she went and smoked some crack co cocaine while the children watched cartoon on TV. Then with a closed... One day this corruptible will put on in corruption. Our body will be replicated. This sinful body will be replicated in a better container, a stainless steel container. And the, the killer beast will be strained out of the heart through the divine sieve. And a perfect heart, a perfect mind will be matched by a perfect body. 
will be given a body like his glorious body, a sinless body, to complement a sinless, a perfect heart. And when we get to the kingdom of God, when we walk down the streets of gold into the sin of our body, the beast in us, one day soon our body will be redeemed. We'll have a glorious body. There will be perfect union of mind and body into one perfect nature. And there will be no inner conflict anymore, bless the Lord. Because the beast in us will have been slain. Great day. Great day. As I close, I'm going to make a simple appeal as I pray. Only God knows what our struggles are. Ellen White talks about that darling sin. The, 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 the Bible talks about the sin that so easily besets. Ellen White describes it as the darling sin, the one that we, we love to revisit. It's that beast in us. And we might be well turned out, polished, behave ourselves, conform to all of the expectations of the church. But under certain conditions, that beast rears its ugly head. Sometimes only we know. And God knows. Sometimes it only happens behind closed doors. But God sees. And this morning, as I pray, if you want to stand before heaven, before God, and say, Lord, please deliver me from this monster that is lurking in, in the dark corners of my heart. No one knows, Lord. Only you and I know. The pastor doesn't know. The church members don't know. But you and I know, and nothing is hidden from you, Lord. So I'm going to come naked before you and ask that you will take control of my mind and rein in that beast in me. Perhaps you're not as good a husband as you ought to be, and you know it. Perhaps you're not the wife you ought to be. And you know it. You know it right well. Perhaps you're not the son or the daughter God would have you to be. You want to stand before God as we pray. Is there anyone this morning who wants to stand before heaven and make that declaration and put that request before God? Lord, tame that beast in my heart. Take control of my mind. Give me victory in this struggle, this battle that is raging in my heart. This severe conflict. Oh Lord, who shall deliver me from this beast? I thank God through Christ Jesus. Father, we are we're standing, acknowledging our need of Jesus. We can't hide. We can hide from others, but we can't hide from you, God. And sometimes we delude ourselves and convince ourselves that we're okay. But we know 
that that beast is controlling our lives and Lord we we beg for deliverance this morning please come into our hearts sit on the throne of our minds clean us up give us pure noble thoughts aspirations desires help us to put away to conquer that besetting sin that darling sin the one we enjoy so much the one that we keep going back to even even after we've confessed it save us dear God so we can look forward to that day when we will be adorned, clothed in a new body, a sinless body. When mind and body will be in perfect union. And the beast will be no more. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory. Amen.